is the Cam Baker Show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back, everyone. We are live right here on the Kev Baker Show. It is the 1st of December. It's Tuesday night. It's nano night right here, live for your enjoyment. Now, before we get going, I want to pause and thank each and every one of you who tune into Truth Frequency Radio right now because you, you people out there, are the reason that we are flying so high right now. And as Joe Joseph and all the guys and girls on the network here say, we offer you the very best of protection from deception. Now I'm looking in the chat room, I'm seeing pictures of Obama flying through there saying, Kev, who? He should know by now. But you know, with Nano Girl being on tonight, I think that made her a little bit queasy having to look at the Obama Nokia just before airtime. And we'll get to Nano Girl in just a moment. Now, in a few announcements before I even get to my co-host tonight, and this comes from Lucky in the chat, and I'm being alerted to something that is happening on Twitter. Now, if you are asked on Twitter to turn on your notifications, don't go anywhere near it. There is some kind of tracking activity going on right now. You can check it out on Twitter. You can ask Lucky in the chat room, but do not reply to any kind of requests to turn on your notifications because people are being tracked via that. So then, let's get into this. And of course, there's no Kev Baker show or Nano Night without the one and only Johnny Whistles. How are you doing? Doing fine, Kev. Uh, Just as you were saying that, Kev, somebody today uh, posted to me that they were getting phone calls from suspicious companies telling them that they have a a virus on their computer and that BT will be closing down the internet for three months. And they they want you to do something, I don't know what it is, but this is another one that's going about, Kev. Yep, just things to be wary of, folks. And, you know, these scams are absolutely numerous. But there's one that Johnny was telling you about. There's something happening on Twitter right now. And always bear in mind, Absolutely everything that we do online or electronically has already been hoovered up by the intelligence services as we speak. So then, let's head into the Wookiee Cave before we go to the one and only Divine Feminine herself. And first up, it's Lockie. We have got Agent X in there, Bill, Brendan, Carl, Cecilia. We've got Charlie, Christopher, Elvis in the house, Iferian, J-Mac, John Teeter, Ken, and we have got the one and only Mr. Kenneth Webb in the chat room. We've got Kenny, myself, Johnny Whistles, Lee, Mark, two Marks, Matthew. Where's looking, John? Nancy, Peter, Papa. What, two Papas? What's going on? We've got the real Joe Wood. You can find her over at Twitter as well, at Real Joe Wood. Really good account there. We've got Sam, regular girl, Scottish John, Sharon, slow mo. Suzu, oh, Suzoe, I apologise, Star, Steve, TFR Wookie, Time Lord, and Wigget. Big, huge, warm welcome to everyone, not just in the chat room, but listening live. And don't forget, if you want to help support TFR and your favourite show, it doesn't have to be the Kev Baker show, you can go to the download section of your favourite show, hit the sign up, and you will have full access to all previous shows on TFR at the full high-quality audio rate. But we're different, and Chris and Cherie, because they are so unique, they share that with the individual hosts. So then, let's get into this tonight, Nano. How are you doing? Welcome back, and what a freaky Friday you were a part of just there last week. It was fantastic. I learned a lot. I felt like uh, I felt like for me, it opened a door that I didn't even know was closed. It was really fantastic. It was wonderful. Big shout out to everybody that's at the show tonight. Hi, hi, hi. You know, um, Nano, you are one of our most popular guests on the show. And, you know, just having yourself there the other night, we had James Swagger there. It was amazing that all the kind of individual guests that we get onto the show can come together on that Freaky Friday and make it something totally uniquely brilliant. 
You know, it's interesting. I think the big takeaway for me for all of the, you know, wonderful research that he has done is it really did occur to me that it's a very powerful thing for the people who rewrite the history is to make sure they edit the history so that we don't really know a lot about where we came from and how we're here and why we're here. And just listening to the presentation on Friday, I felt like the door that opened for me was realizing just how far back so many wonderful things have go. Uh, we're not stupid. We're not, we're not dummies. There's been probably lots and lots and lots of activity on this planet. And we're a big part of that. And I think if we realized that, we would feel so much more empowered. So that's that was the big takeaway for me for Friday. You know, big shout out to him for all of that hard work. Definitely. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, Nano, we were talking about historic things there. And tomorrow in the UK, something is going to be going down that you alerted me. People on the other side of the pond aren't too aware of. And of course, David Cameron is going to go to Parliament den of rats and he is going to ask for their permission to go and kill more people over in Syria. Now yes they'll dress it up as airstriking ISIS but make no bones about this there is absolutely no chance they will go in there and not cause civilian deaths now then we've got a new leader of the opposition here in the UK called Jeremy Corbyn and you know me guys I'm apolitical I don't fall on either side of this fence because they all, in the end of the day, work towards the same agenda. However, Jeremy Corbyn, he has been telling his MPs not to vote for bombing Syria. Why? Because he doesn't believe that bombing a foreign country will in any way protect our security here at home. Now, on that one individual point, I must agree with the guy. Because, Nano Girl... How on Earth's name is going to bomb Syria? Now, remember, we're going in there under the guys that were chasing down the same bad guys that we've been arming for the past couple of years. How is that going to help us here at home to keep us safe? Well, I think we could definitely look at the last at least 14 years here, and I'm not sure I see anything that has come out of this except the loss of life of our wonderful soldiers the loss of our future with all the money that they've spent um, over there, uh, loss of, uh, to me, any kind of, of standing we had or moral standing, whatever was left of it, in the world. Uh, it hasn't made us freer. And I think, if anything, I think people could argue that it's actually made more slaves out of us. And um, I, I, I still can't believe there's any part of that country left to bomb. I mean, it's just... And here's the thing, Nano, because actually. it gets even worse than that. Because David Cameron, the hypocrite that he is, he has now come out and he has blasted MPs that are intending to vote no and calling them terrorist sympathisers. Now, let us just pause for a moment here, shall we? Terrorist sympathisers. This, from one of the cats who was arming the so-called rebels at the very start of an uprising in Syria that never took place. This same guy who was offering to act as air support for them when they were talking about no-fly zones, which in your country, Nano, thankfully, we've seen servicemen and women coming out holding signs saying they didn't want to act as an air force for Al-Qaeda or ISIS. And David Cameron is the cheek to call people who don't want war terrorist sympathisers. Surely another symptom of the inversion of reality that we find ourselves living, wouldn't you think? I would think so. I, I, you know, I think last week, it was kind of interesting. I think last week my head was spinning so badly, I don't think I could actually make sense of all this double speak. And I think this week I have a lot more clarity. I, uh, I just don't see how anybody cannot see through this crap. You know, he's the walking, talking sausage person, right? And hasn't he lost a lot of credibility in the last six months or so? Just, exactly, just for all Nano. of the ridiculous things he's done. And this is what worries me, because I think as the mask does slip and it becomes more obvious to even the less informed people out there that there's 
serious problems going on. And Johnny, I'll come to you on this. I think that is why they're trying to escalate things so fast. I do believe they're trying to drag us into a World War Three scenario, and it's going to kick off in Syria. But your thoughts, Johnny, on all of this? Well, Kev, I've, I've watched some of the the speeches that they've gave at Parliament, and some of them are, are coming up now that they know that we're arming, funding uh, ISIS. Do you know what I mean? It's good that actually, I mean, not just Jeremy Corbyn, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I'm like you, I don't, I, I'm apolitical, there's no point, do you know what I mean, because it's all a game, but at the end of the day, I like what this man says, um, and especially in Syria, okay, we should never be in there, and I don't see why uh, bombing another country, as you say, will make us any safer here, it just, that beggars belief, and the, the fact that you don't want to go and bomb, that makes you a terrorist, that is just Unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable. Exactly. And you know, Nano Girl, you want to get into Obama Nokio. And would it make him a terrorist sympathizer when we factor in that his half brother or his cousin is the bagman for the Muslim Brotherhood out of Sudan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, 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 I just don't really have any words for this guy. I mean, every week he surpasses anything I could have possibly thought that he would have done that he just couldn't go any further. And he never disappoints. Uh, last week, while Turkey was shooting down Russia's planes and their pilots, Obama was threatening us here in the States. So he came out with a statement last week where he has warned the States to comply with federal efforts to resettle the Syrian refugees. Now, last week I reported I think it was like 25 plus governors, mostly Republican. I think there was one Democrat that said, we, we, our states don't want any refugees here. We don't like the fact that you're not really vetting them. We don't know who they are. We don't, we want to know where they're staying, which the White House has decided they don't have to tell the governors, which is absolute sheer audacity and insanity. Excuse me. And then last week, he just said, I'm going to take some punitive action on you guys if you refuse to accept the refugees. Uh, he pulled out he a, a Civil Rights Act law of 1964 prohibiting discrimination for federally funded assisted benefits. Now, granted, the states have most of them. I'm, I'm sure all of them are on some kind of federal funds. Now, here's a guy that walks around with his phone and his pen. Oh, did I say? Yeah. And God knows what else. And doesn't obey any laws, has shredded whatever was left of the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and anything else going on here in America. But he's pulling out the Civil Rights Act of 1964. But I think the thing for me last week, um, and I think we all have our own line in the sand where we go, okay, that's it. That was the day that this or that happened. And for me, as and let me borrow one of his quotes, enough is enough, Obama. Well, let me tell you, piece of trash, enough is enough. I mean, where do you get off threatening us? I mean, you're supposed to be, quote unquote, our president. You are supposed to have our backs. If we decide that we need to take some time to vet the situation, to further look into it. We've already taken 680,000 of these refugees as it is. And, and look what is happening to the EU. And if we look at Merkel, I believe she caved last week, didn't she? She gave money to Turkey to not have any more people go into Germany. So they're already, and she's today, already Nano, at the just effect to throw this in, of this today. Stuff. Merkel declared war on ISIS. Another one oh. is lining up to declare war on ISIS. Johnny Whistles, you're what in here, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, when you were just talking about Obama there, Kev, he could walk into the White House with a loaded AR-15, and yet the pen would still be the most dangerous thing that he walked in the door with. He signed more executive orders, I think, than the last three presidents put together. And that that's that's Obama's excuse for everything. Do you know what I mean? They just sign it. 
Sign it, make it an executive order. And when he leaves office, they'll actually have to build a new congressional library just for his executive orders. And Nano Girl, one of the things that always appealed to me about the USA was the fact that each and every state did have their individual rights. State they, rights. Uh, yeah, in themselves, they were like little countries. If mm-hmm. you didn't like live in one place, you had the freedom to go and live somewhere else where it did suit you. And to me, that is the I deal model not anymore well that depends kev i mean if you've taken money and uh, they they call in the pied piper say you know we'll pull the funding if you're if you are hooked into washington like that you know like any uh buddy who's owned by i had all these really horrible words that came to mind but if you are owned by something kind of dark and evil they can pull the funding and you know and things are tight right now right we have a lot of homeless we've got a lot of military people that don't have places to stay uh obamacare is start me on the vets nano exactly uh obamacare is absolutely falling through the cracks i don't give a crap what they're saying you know, things are pretty harsh here, and we've got this very cold winter. Uh, a lot of states are going through some very tough stuff. So, we, you know, no, we don't want more war. No, we don't want to go over there and fight something that we're actually pouring our, all our money to arm. And look at all those cars. Is that what they th- – did they get made in America? What about the – Missile that shot the, you know, the pilot down or, or blew up the ambulance, rather. Isn't that ours? I mean, this is just in crazy, crazy town, crazy town. The other thing is he's still yapping and crapping about taking on the guns. So he's after that again. He's decided, um, what was his latest piece of trash? Oh, yeah. If you're on the no-fly list, he may not let you buy a gun. Now, nobody knows why they're on the no-fly list, by the way. And nobody can... I mean, Al Gore was on the no-fly list. Nobody knows how they get on the no-fly list. So they just have to put a bunch of names on there and say, I'm sorry, can't have a gun. And the other part that I still find very fascinating um, and don't feel sorry for Obama Nokio whatsoever is the uh, rift between him and the Pentagon. I mean, there's been some very interesting articles over at Sputnik and RT, more, I mean, our press isn't going to talk about it, about what's going on and that the rhetoric that gets spewed by Mr. Enough is Enough and his cohort, Kerry, doesn't match anything that the Pentagon's doing. And Carter, and and I think that they're putting uh, the C, they're linking the CIA with that as well, of course. So, <laughs> no, no, this is pure speculation, God. okay? But think of this, right? Think of the daily briefings, and you've got hardened CIA agents, people that have been in there for absolutely years. You've got generals, five star people, seen it, done it. And you've got Obama trying to tell them what to do. I can definitely see a rift in there. Absolutely, because these people aren't stupid and they aren't going to go along with this agenda. Now, I still fear the Obama Nokia pulling something off that's going to, A, entitle him to rip the guns off people, and B, I fear him staying in there. Doesn't need to stay in there, though, because everything he's done in that office, well, whoever comes along next, they can just pick up the reins and carry it on. Well, I think you have that piece, Kev, but right now I'm taking a look. Now, there's a couple of scenarios here. Scenario one is there are two sets of powers that be trying to run this place and they don't agree there's scenario two is they're in full agreement and what they're going to do is sick obama on the people that live here unfortunately we're stuck with that piece of trash and then the pentagon and the cia will go off and do their own thing you know whatever they want to do whatever they feel like they need to get done you know and then it looks like they're hell-bent on you know the neocons are hell-bent on this war which is Tragic beyond tragic. But, you know, I, I know I've said this on the show far too many times, but I still can't get my head around it. How does a house divided survive? I know they don't want us to survive. I totally get that. But aren't we supposed to still be funding the Pentagon? Aren't we supposed to still be people that they're going to grab soldiers or they or it just doesn't matter? You just decimate the country 
and get bombed to holy oblivion. I mean, I, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, these guys don't have our backs except to put knives in them. So how does that all stick together? Doesn't it eventually fall apart? I mean, hasn't that happened in history you would so, think so many Nano, times? Here's my take on it. And you've got to remember that right now, obviously, we're in the most surveilled times ever. But then we go to America and then you have to put it on steroids. And I can imagine that if you have enough dirt on enough people in enough positions, then you probably can get away with this. And then what you could probably do beforehand is identify those using something like, oh, I don't know, Jade 2 software that aren't going to go along with your plan. Yeah. You slowly shift them sideways or down the, way, down the pyramid a little, move people in who you do have dirt of, or on and can control, and hey presto, a tyranny is born. Johnny Whistles, what do you think of all this, man? You've got a boy who lives over there. This must worry you listening to this. Yeah, it does, Kev. But the thing is, it doesn't worry him. And that's what gets me, Kev. The fact that he can't see what's going on around about him because I don't know if if he's just if he is just unawake or it just doesn't want to see it, Kev, because What's happening round about him just now should really give him a lot to think about, but he doesn't see it. And this is so, so appropriate that you bring this up, John, because myself and Nano and yourself were talking about this before the show. And we were talking, Nano, about why are people not out in the streets with pitchforks two, three hundred years ago? This would not have flown. Hell no. People would have been rising up. But this has been a plan hundreds of years in the making, hasn't it? Yeah, and it's brilliant. And I think I got into a conversation last night with somebody and they said, as I told them I did the show and what I talked about, and they said something about, uh, well, I don't believe, I said, she, they said, well, why don't you market yourself all over the place? And I said, well, I still have to get a job. And uh, the comment was made, well, I don't believe in conspiracy theories. And I said, you know what? I don't either. There's no such thing. I said, I'll tell you what there is. There's people like us that have been talking, and I didn't say people like you, for about two or three years now. And now every, and I said, so everything has come to fruition that we've been talking about. I said, so there's no conspiracies. I said, do you see any secrets out there? We're headed for World War III. Can you see that? And I feel that I realized just how mad I am. At, at the asleepness, and you, you know? know? Nana, <sighs> just you bringing that up there. I can't remember where I heard this, but people were discussing conspiracy theory and there was they were talking about the exact same thing. Now, whether you believe the Paris attacks, for an example, were exactly as we are told they were or whether you think they were fake and made up and allowed to happen, you do realise that behind that was a conspiracy Either real terrorists did get together in private to plan and discuss a course of action that would attempt to bring about some political change, right? Or on the other side, you've got the black ops teams on behalf of those few in government who pulled the strings, meeting in private to carry out an action that will result in political change. Oh, I don't know, say more of our rights been taken away, Nano? Conspiracies happen all the time. Uh, well, Kev, let me tell you where I'm coming from. I'm sick of living two realities. I don't know what about anybody else who's listening to this show, but, you know, we live reality one where we hang out and we pretend like a lot of stuff's not happening because it's comfortable for everybody around us. They don't want to talk about this, whatever. And it's draining. It's so draining. And I realized recently, especially the last month, that this other stuff that's going, it's, it's like, as the saying was in, in one of the movies, it's getting real now. You know what I mean? It's getting real. And I'm tired of two realities. It's just let me live one. One. You know, exactly. this is what's happening. There isn't any more secrets, people. It's out there. And whether, you know, who did Paris or who did whatever, What's happening is happening, and now we're at the effect of it. Everybody is going to be at the effect of it. If if your walking, talking sausage jerkwad votes for war, how do you do? If enough is enough, jerkwad goes and goes, I've got your guns, and I'm coming after you. Dude, it's getting real here. You know what I mean? It's getting real. 
Exactly. I know I'm getting a little fired up here, but... Whew. Exactly. No, quite right, Nano, because right now in London, rightly so, there are thousands of the people showing their disgust at the fact that we're going to be going for more war, killing yet more people. And how are they justifying it? By going after the bad guys that they put in there in the first place. And nobody, nobody seems to be remembering that the main goal in all of this is Assad. For that is the final domino before they can go for Iran. Now we'll be back after the break with a really fired up nano girl and some very special birthday wishes for one of our very special listeners. Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Even Big Mike B is in the house. Big shout out to you. Stay tuned. This is the Camp Baker Show. Welcome back and a big shout out to all you Wookiees tonight who are standing tall and standing proud in the face of lots of tyranny that's coming our way. But you know, this hour every day reminds me why it's such a great time to be alive because I get to share time with all of you people out there. We might not have all the same opinions, thoughts and ideas and I actually love that because by sharing our different thoughts and ideas we learn from each other. And this show and this network is nothing. We're people powered, absolutely, right down to the bare bones of it. And because of that, I want to pause and take a wee moment to send out a lot of birthday wishes to somebody who is going to have their birthday in approximately 29 minutes. But remember, we're a global show because over in Australia, we've got listeners. So right now, Johnny Whistles, it is Lichty Lass's birthday. Yeah, uh, really, she's absolutely brilliant woman, Kev. Uh, um, I think people should actually go and have a look at our, our Facebook page, Lichty Lass. Uh, some of the things that she posts on there, Kev, as well, is absolutely fantastic. And she's been a great friend and a great listener to the show. So a very, very special happy birthday to you. Absolutely. And, you know, she gives me a lot to think about on Facebook. There's not many people who, when I see them commenting or posting, that I have time to genuinely, like, take time, sit down and go and check out. But I know that when it's coming from the Lichty, it's going to be something that's at least relevant and going to get me thinking. And that is what it's all about. Now, I'm trying to regain my composure. We've had Sarah Palin flying through the chat room. It's getting a bit hot in here tonight. And I've even had the... (laughs) Ken Webb called me Jack Bauer. Johnny Whistles. Imagine me getting called Jack Bauer, one of my fictional heroes. Well, to get you something called something good from Ken Webb just itself is an honour. Exactly. And, you know, to get called something good when you're Kev Baker these days, that in (laughs) itself is a rarity. Oh, boy, when you're over the target, do you take the flack? And what is it they say? What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. I'm sitting here sitting, feeling very strong tonight, Nano Girl. (laughs) Nano. This is Nano Night. We dealt with those political scoundrels in the first half. It has got your blood boiling. So what better time to shift it up and move into your genre? The cool techie stuff. What's happening? Oh, yeah. It's time to do that. We, we, we uh, beat the heck out of the, uh, the idiots. So it's time to move on. So let's start with, uh, uh, you know how we love to put our shows together with technology. Now, this time, the article did that for us. I'm a fan of Limitless. Limitless is about that guy who takes those those pills, and he can use every part of his, his uh, brain. So the... Le- the, the is that the like epi- compared to the 4% we use just now? I think it's three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah I've not, in fact, I'm convinced maybe some people it's 1%. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so yeah, so... The episode I watched, now I watched the episode before I saw this article, and so basically uh, the part, the article's called Arm, as in your arm, again, and it, the, they have, you know, we've talked about those electronic arms, right, those, you know, some of those really cool gadgets that are coming out, out there. Yeah. And so basically someone hacks them. And one guy kills his wife, and somebody else crashes, and somebody else does all this really weird stuff because they hijack their 
their cyber, you know, their arm. And so the name of this article is the biggest cybersecurity threat for 2016 could be hackers holding patients ransom for the use of their medical devices. Something like this happened on Limitless. And I thought, wow, some, they must be listening to our show. How you we know, I've always- even heard people talking about the ability to hack into, and this sounds totally, utterly yeah. crazy, but pacemakers and devices like that, Nano. Now, we do need to be thinking about this kind of thing because like you explained there, that really has to be a worry because with the hacking that does go on, it's not always white hat stuff. There are going to be groups and organizations out there, and dare I say it, governments, that will be able to hold you hostage in your own body. Well, what if they hack your brain chips? What if somebody, remember uh, we talked about that uh, brain surgeon who put those chips in his head? What if they'd been the kind of chips that could be hacked? I sometimes what? wonder if they even need the chip in our brain to hack it. We know that the brain oh, runs on electrical we know they don't. kind of... Exactly, Nano. We know they don't. We've already talked... That is that is the scary part of all the stuff we've heard from... Was it CJ, that the, the lady that talked about Jade Helm and everything? That's correct. And you can find that yeah. kind of material over at Level 9 News yes. over on YouTube yes. and a website. Yep. she And she said, you know, they can direct the... Um, what was it? The... Uh, X or the rays or whatever the the stuff at our brains and then they the can take it over. Pathways. That's right, and it and we can we'll think that we thought the thoughts. Well, you know, they can hijack what we're thinking. They can they, ugh, ugh. they think that they know when we're going to commit a crime. I mean, it's all that stuff. It's all that stuff. But I thought it was interesting because I thought it was just us that did that. We took all of our fun sci-fi shows and that. By the way, we saw this on TV. So, anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, they must do, like I said, they must be listening to the Kev Baker show. They must be. And, you know, something that I remember you telling me about one of your first visits to KBS. See, I knew enough to remember them all, Nano. But you were telling me about my poster girl. No, not Sarah Palin. The other one, Regina Dugan. And her Mm -hmm. mad tattoos that she's got. But these tattoos ain't so mad anymore. And they're starting to show up, aren't they? Uh, yes. And then I think, yeah, we can play the YouTube on this one. So this, remember last week. Now, last week we were looking for a happy story, weren't we? Well, we always look for a happy story. And we ended up talking about Chaotic Moon that had that sort of sensor-like head piece that goes over your brain. And it kind of gives you the option, if you're blind, to... Send out signals so you know if you're going to be walking, like give you a signal like a, a bat, like you're coming into close to a wall or, yeah, you like know what sonar, I'm saying? basically. It, yes, kind of looks like sonar. Well, they have what they call bio wearables and they're tech tats. So do you want to kind of put on the YouTube for us? Let's go for it. Let's see what they say. Here at Chaotic Moon Studios, we're exploring a new frontier of bio wearables with a project we're calling tech tats. So this is really going beyond what the fitness tracker is. And we're right now looking into the medical field specifically because there's a lot of monitoring devices that take up a lot of room and space. So rather than going to the doctor once a year to get your physical, this tech tattoo could be something that you just put on your body once a year and it monitors everything that they would do in a physical and sends that to your doctor. And if there's an issue, they could call you. So the tech tattoos can really tie in everything into one package. So it can look at early signs of fever, your vital signs, heart rate, everything that it needs to look at to notify you that you're getting sick or your child's getting sick. So another beautiful thing that Tech Tattoo kind of takes over and disrupts the market is in the banking industry. We carry wallets around and they're so vulnerable. With the Tech Tattoo, you could carry all your information on your skin and when you want your credit card information or your ID, you can pull that up automatically through the system. So the great thing about this idea is that it not only serves a really awesome purpose, but it can also be really aesthetically fun. So tech tats are something that I'm passionate about and our team here at Chaotic Community is very passionate about and we're excited for the public to see what we've been creating and to really change the industry of technology with something like the temporary tattoo. And Chaotic Moon is excited to bring it to you in the near future. 
<laughs> go chaotic moon. Nano I mean, girl. Is, is this shades of our good friend and pal, Regina Dugan? Absolutely. Is this, does this sound, I mean, my God, we paid that, we played that YouTube of hers like 65 times. I, I wondered if Chaotic Moon borrowed it. What Here's really worries th- me, before, sorry, Nano, but you know, we see all the young ones nowadays getting the tattoos. We see them all queuing up for days for the latest smart gadgets. This is not going to be hard to sell to some of the public. No, it's not. And here's some of the uses. Uh, military, like detecting poisons in the air, pathogens in a soldier's body, or identifying when they're hurt or stressed. Uh, it could be used for a tracking device that could, for example, help parents stay aware of where their kids are. Remember how cute this was going to be for the kids? Ooh. In an eco-friendly, non-invasive use of platform that basically turns you into a human circuit board. Whoa, it could be better than that. Nothing. The merger of man and <laughs> machine. But let me throw some techie stuff at you, Nano. All right. And maybe we will need these tattoos sooner than we think. And they were talking about banking there, stuff like that. But possibly mm-hmm. we'll need them to identify human or clone. And I'm talking about this because over in China right now, in Tianjin, of all places, in the dock area, there's a lab been built, and it's going to be the largest cloning factory in the world. And one day, it could well clone humans. And that's why they've chosen China for the location of this lab. Get this, guys. The Chinese scientist behind the world's largest cloning factory has said that replicating humans is already possible, but is only holding off doing so for fear of the public reaction. Zhu Zhanshan, head of Boya Life Group, said his firm are already working to improve the cloning of primates in order to better test the animals for diseases. And he added it's just a short biological step from monkeys to humans. Now, Nano, they're already cloning people's dogs at a cost of $100,000 a go. How far away do you think we really are from seeing or at least been told we have cloned humans? Because he's admitted it there. They can already do it. Well, didn't we have – we had a story about three or four weeks ago where they uh, created humans uh, from three parents. And then they were worried about what's going to happen when those kids grow up and have kids. Uh, they, and I'm thinking, well, are you going to keep track uh, of them? Didn't they say they had 30 of them? Well, here's the thing, born? because I'm glad you brought this up. The actual guy, the scientist, Zhu, he yeah. says that right now it's quite limited because basically we only get the option of having a half-mother, half-father offspring. And by using this clone technology, well, we'll have three choices. It can be the way we know. It can be the mother and father, or it can be all father. All mother, and like you're saying now as well, a whole mix of the above. Yes, exactly. I I personally think, as with everything, it's already out there. Don't you? That's exactly what I was hinting at there. And you know, Johnny Whistles, I think this cloning stuff has been on the go for a while. And you know, just thinking about it here right now, putting dots together maybe that don't connect, but possibly these underground base stories where we hear of grey aliens and things like that. Maybe just misconstrued cloning experiments. Yeah, you could be right, Kev. Um, but I think the Chinese have been cloning far longer than anybody else, and I'm sure that they have probably cloned a human before. Definitely. Absolutely. But and you think? Could John, you imagine? Get, could you imagine two David Camerons? Oh, go, oh. Go there. But think about this, John. <laughs> They actually chose to move the like technology and the base that they had from South Korea into China because their laws permit that they could, they really can, clone humans. And like he says, it's only public opinion that's stopping him. You're telling me the military aren't doing this already, Nano? Well, I don't understand why we need to do that. I mean, doesn't China have a billion people there already? Why would you need to clone them? Possibly suggests they already are. <laughs> Well, I guess I guess you would do it for money, right? I mean, if somebody... Of you know, course, God's- they would be sold as slaves, I would imagine, or used as cannon fodder before the robotic wars take, take place. But, you know, I just... 
maybe it's just my stupid belief system, but I believe if if they even if they clone somebody, I still think they're humans. I still think. I mean, how do you know they don't have a soul? You oh, know? I, I, mean, didn't, I, I didn't. Yeah. say that. I didn't. Say no, that. yeah. Totally. No, but I mean, I mean, but but to be looked at as less than because you were a clone versus you know the first edition, I guess you'd say. Do I, you know, the, with the divide and conquer tactics that we yes, live under, they would segregate us absolutely. And there was a show on not long ago. I can't remember the name of it. But it was kind of along these lines, and some of these robots had become sentient, and they wanted the kind of equal rights. But again, it was all them and us. You know, these are things that we're going to have to think about as we move into what they call this brave new world. Well, they were teaching robots to uh, not take orders. That was another article I saw online last week where... uh they they said r- r- robot engineers are developing robots that can disobey instructions from humans if they believe it may cause them to become damaged. Do you remember that creepy crappy movie from Spielberg? Uh, wasn't it AI? Wasn't there an AI movie and it had Halle Joel in it? Who I do like him, but the I see ghost kid. You remember? See, this is weird because this goes totally against the. Asimov's three laws or three laws of robotics because they go like this a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm a robot must obey orders given it by human beings Mm -hmm. except where such orders would conflict the first law and finally a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Now They are what you're explaining. I did see this story, Nano. This totally goes against this. Well, the robots are politely declining to take our orders. So I guess that's something. When asked to walk forward on a table, the robots refuse to budge, telling their creator, sorry, I cannot do this as there is no support ahead. (laughs) So, I mean, you know, the thing that scares me about this is again, you know, it's like we're empowering the robots before we even know what the heck we're doing with our. I'm, exactly, we should be putting right. limiters in place instead of removing them before we let the genie out the bottle. Now, yeah. Johnny Whistles, I'll come to you on this because we're in Scotland. You know, we're at the cutting edge of the games industry. I can imagine the robotics industry as we move into the future will also be booming here. I would love to encourage little Kev to go into that kind of work and you know when there's things like Fukushima going on and people dangerous fires we really should be utilizing the technology to build robots that save humans having to go in and risk their lives but again John it's the times that we're living in and these tyrants in power that make me so fearful of all these great advancements we should be utilizing but the great advancements, Kev, never ever get used for the people as as usual, and it will always be used in a war scenario. The first thing we think about when we find out something, Kev, is how can we use it to kill people? That's our mentality. There's some of the things that are coming out, even with that uh, Chaotic Moon Studios, I mean, right. some of the things are absolutely fantastic that, that can look after you and let you know when something's wrong. That's fantastic, but when we take it a step further than that, and then that's when it all goes to pot, uh, it's just silly, Kev, it's silly. I love the technology, I love the technology, but I just hate the fact that we use it for war more than we would use it to save people. Exactly, the current cats that run the planet, Nano, they're like the bad guys out of a dystopic Philip K. Dick novel. And they will turn all of this cool stuff against us. Well, yeah, I, I think I, I, obviously, unfortunately, they have the money. And they're the ones that are in the colleges or the ones that are grabbing up all the brains and saying, okay, we need this, we need that. I mean, just like we've, how many times have we talked about what DARPA's up to, right? And so there you go. And that's what they do. That's how they, they decide to do something. And then it sort of trickles out to us. But again, you know, I think I really like focusing on some of this tech stuff. I like spending time on it. I like our our listeners to know what's coming down the pipe 
so that we can, you know, kind of keep them posted. Well, Nano, trust me, the listeners obviously love your updates because they keep coming back for more. And you were talking about things trickling down there. And I've been keen to get your take again on something that really it still has all conspiracy kind of corners going nuts. And that was that Pepsi advert about the Black Knight satellite. Now, I believe you had a video to recommend to some of the viewers out there. But have you had any more thoughts on that kind of PSYOP disclosure? I haven't had any more thoughts. Um, I think I threw the video your way. Hopefully you can shoot it out to everybody. Do you have it? I'll find if, it. What's the name of the channel? If, 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 if not, go to Face Like the Sun. Go to that group, the Face Like the Sun. And he did an 11-minute YouTube on Pepsi Decoded. Now, I don't agree with his s- f- summary findings of what he thought it all meant, but he goes into all of the people involved and all of the re- just you know, who were the actors and the directors and who paid for it and that kind of stuff. I, I you know, <laughs> it's it's just so weird that, you know, we've got all this stuff again. We come up to the chessboard and some of the pieces don't seem to fit on the chessboard, but they're firmly planted there, like this Pepsi commercial. Well, there's you one got, other story, Nano, that we weren't yeah. going to go into tonight, but you did yeah. mention before the show. And I think it might fit here. Okay. Because scientists are receiving signals from space. Right. right after we watch an advert from Pepsi showing us that there's going to be a signal coming from space. <laughs> Just saying. I, well, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I know it's like astronomers have picked up five mysterious unidentified radio signals that could originate from outside the Milky Way. And it, so they keep the UFO meme going, M-E-M-E, right? They keep that going and... Uh, the future stuff and robotics and, again, all this very cool stuff that we would all love to get our hands on eventually. I still think it would be fun to play with robots and have fun with them. I'd love to get on the hoverboard. I'd love to get on some of these new newfangled things and just have fun with them. And then on the other hand, we've got something to me that is as old as dirt and should be dropped in its war and violence and killing and so I, I can't, I can never... You know, Nano, I wish we had a playbook like them because they are yeah. uber clever. They know what tricks to pull. And we sure here do. we are. The darkest hour comes before the dawn and things yeah. are so bright. That future is right there in our grasp. We just yes. need to formulate some kind of unified plan to grab it all back. And you know, that's why when you listen to this show in the archives or on YouTube or wherever... It might sound dark and depressing at times. And the world is dark and depressing in one hand. But on the other hand, look at everything that awaits us. Us, the people. Not them. They're the ones keeping it for themselves. Bullies. Selfish. Tyrants. Millions. Billions of us. Thousands of them. It's unbelievable, Nano. And I just think we're so, so close. Part of I me did. wants to cry, but part of me wants to scream that we're winning. I, 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 I don't think they're going to get what they're looking for. I really don't. It, you never, I mean, ha- ask anybody in the audience a time in their life where they tried to make everything happen their way. What happened? Everything broke. I, I, certainly in my life. And one of the th- biggest lessons in my life was live and let live and let go, let go, because you have no control. And I think what they think they're going to get out of all this, I don't think they're going to get. And listening to that wonderful show on Friday, I felt like, like I said, I felt like a door opened and there was this realization that the past has grounded us into the future. And you and know it's what, Nano? I feel, future. I feel the past is shouting at us yes. right now. It I do is too. trying to tell us a message, just like Pepsi shows the Black yeah. Knight satellite trying to show us a message coming from that. And you know, Johnny, we spoke about the Black Knight often. And when you look at what Pepsi put out there, possibly some kind of time capsule that's going to release a message for the 
betterment of humanity. Yeah, I know there's probably banjos singing kumbaya as it comes down, right? But what if that is what the Black Knight is? What if that was left here for this time? What if there is some message on there that is either going to bring us together or actually show us what we need to do to leave all this behind? I know it's airy-fairy, Johnny, but what, what's the harm in being optimistic and looking on the bright side, man? Yeah, you can look on the bright side and think like that, Kev, but I think maybe if it's a case of that thing is waiting on something that we do, then it's going to be sitting there a hell of a long time, Kev, <laughs> because we are in an absolute hellhole here. Do you know what I mean? And there's nothing that's going to please this satellite, let me tell you, until we get rid of the greed, we get rid of the people that, that, that all they want is war, people that make money, they, do you know what I mean? There's no respect. We have to get all that back first, kid, before we even th- think about leaving this planet. You know what, Johnny Russells? I don't even think we have to get rid of them. I think what we have to do is continue to wake up connect with the source from the past, the present, and the future, and go past them and leave them in the dust. The only way that we're going to change things is we decide we've had enough. And that's the only way you ever change your life now, is you decide you're not going to participate. You're not going to do it. There'll be doors opening for us. I know it. And I think that's what my higher self is always saying to me. They're not going to win. They're not going to win. It'll never be the way they want it to be. Because our consciousness is calling us, I agree with you, Kev, the past, the present, the future is reaching out to us. Let's bring in the light. Absolutely. And yet again, shining her light brightly tonight. That was Nano Girl. You can catch her every Tuesday night right here on the Kev Baker Show. Again, I want to thank each and every one of you individually out there, but there's too many. So until next time, wherever you are, make it T. F-R. And then he touched that dial. This is the Cam Baker Show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back, everyone. We are live right here on the Kev Baker Show. It is the 1st of December. It's Tuesday night. It's Nano Night right here live for your enjoyment. Now, before we get going, I want to pause and thank each and every one of you who tune into Truth Frequency Radio right now, because you, you people out there, are the reason that we are flying so high right now. And as Joe Joseph and all the guys and girls on the network here say, we offer you the very best of protection from deception. Now, I'm looking in the chat room, I'm seeing pictures of Obama flying through there saying, Kev, who? He should know by now. But, you know, with Nano Girl being on tonight, I think that made her a little bit queasy having to look at the Obama Nokia just before airtime. And we'll get to Nano Girl in just a moment. Now, in a few announcements before I even get to my co-host tonight, and this comes from Lucky in the chat, and I'm being alerted to something that is happening on Twitter Now, if you are asked on Twitter to turn on your notifications, don't go anywhere near it. There is some kind... I think if we realized that, we would feel so much more empowered. So that's that was the big takeaway for me for Friday. You know, big shout out to him for all of that hard work. Definitely. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, Nano, we were talking about historic things there, and tomorrow... In the UK, something is going to be going down that you alerted me. People on the other side of the pond aren't too aware of. And of course, David Cameron is going to go to Parliament, that den of rats, and he is going to ask for their permission to go and kill more people over in Syria. Now, yes, they'll dress up as airstriking ISIS, but make no bones about this. There is absolutely no chance they will go in there and not cause civilian deaths. Now then, we've got a new leader of the opposition here in the UK called Jeremy Corbyn. And you know me, guys, I'm apolitical. I don't fall on either side of this fence because they all, in the end of the day, work towards the same agenda. However, Jeremy Corbyn, he has been telling his MPs not to vote for bombing Syria. Why? 
because he doesn't believe that bombing a foreign country will in any way protect our security here at home. Now, on that one individual point, I must agree with the guy. Because, Nano Girl, how out of tracking activity going on right now? You can check it out on Twitter. You can ask Lockie in the chat room. But do not reply to any kind of requests to turn on your notifications because people are being tracked via that. So then, let's get into this. And, of course, there's no Kev Baker show or Nano Night without the one and only... Johnny Whistles, how are you doing? Doing fine, Kev. Uh, just as you were saying that, Kev, somebody today uh, posted to me that they were getting phone calls from suspicious companies telling them that they have a, a virus on their computer and that BT will be closing down the internet for three months. And they, they want you to do something, I don't know what it is, but this is another one that's going about, Kev. Yep, just things to be wary of, folks. And, you know, these scams are absolutely numerous. But there's one that Johnny was telling you about. There's something happening on Twitter right now. And always bear in mind, absolutely everything that we do online or electronically has already been hoovered up by the intelligence services as we speak. So then, let's head into the Wookiee Cave before we go to the one and only Divine Feminine herself. And first up, it's Lockie. We have got Agent X in there. Bill, Brendan, Carl, Cecilia. It was fantastic. I learned a lot. I felt like uh, I felt like for me, it opened a door that I didn't even know was closed. It was really fantastic. It was wonderful. Big shout out to everybody that's at the show tonight. Hi, hi, hi. You know, um, Nano, you are one of our most popular guests on the show. And, you know, just having yourself there the other night, we had James Swagger there. It was amazing that all the kind of individual guests that we get onto the show can come together on that Freaky Friday and make it something totally uniquely brilliant. You know, it's interesting. I think the big takeaway for me for all of the, you know, wonderful research that he has done is it really did occur to me that, it's a very powerful thing for the people who rewrite the history is to make sure they edit the history so that we don't really know a lot about where we came from and how we're here and why we're here. And just listening to the presentation on Friday, I felt like the door that opened for me was realizing just how far back so many wonderful things have go. Uh, we're not stupid. We're not. We're not dummies. There's been probably lots and lots and lots of activity on this planet, and we're a big part of that. And I we've got Charlie, Christopher, Elvis in the house. Iferian, J Mac, John Teeter, Ken, and we have got the one and only Mister Kenneth Webb in the chat room. We've got Kenny, myself, Johnny Whistles, Lee, Mark, two Marks, Matthew. Where's looking, John? Nancy, Peter, Papa, what, two Papas? What's going on? We've got the real Joe Wood. You can find her over at Twitter as well, at Real Joe Wood. Really good account there. We've got Sam, regular girl, Scottish John, Sharon, Slow Mo, Suze Zoo. Oh, Sue Zoe, I apologize. Star, Steve, TFR Wookie, Time Lord, and Wigget. Big, huge, warm welcome to everyone, not just in the chat room, but listening live. And don't forget, if you want to help support TFR and your favourite show, it doesn't have to be the Kev Baker show, you can go to the download section of your favourite show, hit the sign up, and you will have full access to all previous shows on TFR at the full high quality audio rate. But we're different, and Chris and Cherie, because they are so unique, they share that with the individual hosts. So then, let's get into this tonight, Nano. How are you doing? Welcome back. And what a freaky Friday you were a part of just there last week. 